Welcome back here to the T-Mobile Arena for what was a tremendous night of boxing. The inaugural show kicking things off, premier boxing champions, a new era, PBC on Prime Video, and what a night it was. I want to thank all the media for being out here after the fights, as we are going to have all the fighters, uh, Isa Cruz and I believe Sebastian Fundora and Tim Zhu will be making their way as well. But... Uh, first, in our co-main event, what a fight it was. Isa Cruz, I've said time and time again, even before tonight, this kid is an absolute superstar. And once again, if you didn't notice in the arena, it was nearly 95% for Isa Cruz in here, the pride of Mexico. And now they can say they have another world champion, WBA super lightweight world champion and he defeated Roly Romero by an eighth round TKO and what a performance it was. Isak, congratulations on becoming a world champion. What is the feeling right now being the 140 pound champion? Isak, felicitaciones por ser el campeón mundial. ¿Cómo se siente ser flamante campeón mundial de las 140 libras? Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas noches. Y bueno, me siento muy contento, muy agradecido con Dios por esta gran oportunidad, con Al Jaimon, con PBC, con Sean Gibbons por darme esta gran oportunidad y aprovecharla al máximo, con mi esposa, con mis hijos, con todo el equipo de trabajo. Y bueno, venimos nada más por lo que nos pertenecía, por la cereza del pastel y muy contentos de habernos coronado como campeones del mundo en 140 libras. I'm very happy, very glad to be a brand new world champion. I want to thank God, first of all, also Al Heyman, PVC, Amazon Prime Video, everyone that made this possible. And this was a product of hard work. It wouldn't have happened without my team. And I want to thank my family as well. They have been here with me throughout. I'm really happy, really excited to be a, the new world champion at 140. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to open things up to questions to the media. So please raise your hand. Be patient with us. We have one mic. So raise your hand, and we will try to get to all of your questions. So I believe we already have someone with a mic. So go ahead um, and uh, ask away. Hey, Pitbull, how are you? This is uh, Najee from Cigar Talk. I'm here. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Um, a big win. Very exciting style. Um, now that you're at 140, um, fans have already been clamoring on Twitter uh, about a potential fight with Sabril Matias. Um, I wanted to know what you think uh, about a fight with him. ¿Qué te parecería una pelea contra Sabril Matias? Porque se está rumoreando que quizás se podría ser un buen oponente para vos. Como lo he dicho, yo no me cierro a pelear con nadie siempre y cuando lleguen a buenos términos entre empresas. Y bueno, en primer punto que que su empresa y mi empresa lleguen a un gran acuerdo y yo peleo con quien sea. Bring anybody on. I'm willing, like I, I've always said, I'm willing to fight anybody as long as both parties come to an agreement. If his side comes to an agreement with my side and everything works out, then I have no problem fighting with him or anyone else. Isaac, Ernesto Amador de No Puedes Jugar Boxeo. Antes que nada, felicidades por una carrera que conozco desde el inicio de sacrificios y demás. Y justo la, la primera pregunta es eso. ¿Valió la pena todo el sacrificio de momentos inclusive complicados en lo económico? Uh, was the sacrifice worth it? Everything that you had to endure to get to this point, was it worth it? Claro, totalmente. Ahora sí que para poder llegar a hacer algo o alguien en la vida, siempre requiere de mucho sacrificio, disciplina y trabajo. Y es lo que hicimos en esta, en esta noche. Eh, tuvimos que sacrificar muchas cosas para que se vieran reflejado todo el trabajo hoy y podernos coronar como campeones del mundo. Absolutely, it was worth it. Anything worth doing in life takes sacrifice, hard work, and dedication. And that was what you saw tonight inside the ring, the fruits of that hard labor, that dedication that made all of this happen. Pitbull, uh, congratulations. Steven Coreno, KOR Art of Sports. Uh, you know, there was a lot of talk coming into this fight. You know, there was the Chihuahua chain. Just how did it feel to get the KO victory, you know, to stop, you know, talk, do the talking in the ring like you wanted and uh, did Roly give you the, the chihuahua chain after? Bueno, hubo mucha, muchas declaraciones cruzadas en la previa, la cadenita del chihuahua 
y todo eso. ¿Qué tan bien se sintió el poder de tenerlo antes de la campana final a Rolly? Y además, ¿él te dio la cadenita como prometió? No, creo que demostré que más vale que respeten a un pitbull porque el que lo llame Chihuahua, aquí se va a ver reflejado cómo va a terminar como Rolando en esta noche. Y bueno, la, la cadena nada más se quedó en puro, puro hablar. Well, I showed you that you better respect the pitbull because if you disrespect him and call him a Chihuahua, then you saw how Rolly Romero ended up tonight. Yeah. And, and the chain, well, it ended up as being just stuck. I don't have it. Pitbull right here, Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV. Uh, first off, congratulations, champ, on your victory tonight. I know that you put a lot into this. I wanted to ask you in particular, can you take us back through the first sequence of when you started to get Roley in trouble? Uh, what was going through your mind when you started to get him in trouble? What was going through your mind during those first rounds in which you saw that Roley could be in trouble? How did you do to maintain yourself consistent and focused on what you wanted to do? Pues como bien lo dicen, enfocado, nunca perder la cabeza y ir trabajando para ir golpeando con, con inteligencia y llevar a cabo el trabajo de, de todo el campamento. Well, it was all about focus and it was all about reminding myself of everything I've done through training camp. Relying on those fundamentals led me to the success I had tonight. Isaac, this is Cynthia from Best Women's Boxing Show, period. Congratulations to you and, in, you and your team. Uh, can you just rate... Rolly's power, and also, would you be willing, if you can't get Matias, would you be willing to fight Barroso, the one that Rolly won the belt, allegedly, against in the last fight, the goal, uh, a couple months back? Bueno, primero que nada, felicitaciones por la victoria. Y si no fuese Matias, ¿estarías dispuesto a pelear contra Barroso, quien era el oponente original de Rolly en esa pelea controversial en la que Rolly ganó el título? Como lo vuelvo a repetir, yo no me cerro a pelear con nadie siempre y cuando lleguen a un buen acuerdo entre empresas o manejadores y yo peleo con quien sea y en donde sea. I can't say enough. If both parties agree, then I'll fight anybody, wherever, whenever. So it's just a matter of that happening. Pitbull, congratulations. What's it like for you to share this belt with your father, who was a fighter, and your grandfather? Have you already... Talk to him in Mexico City. ¿Qué significa para vos el poder compartir este momento acá con tu papá, con tu abuelo y todo y todos los familiares que tienen un legado que vos estás llevando hacia adelante? Pues es una satisfacción muy grande poderlo compartir con mi papá, con mi abuelito en vida y que lo pudieron ellos apreciar ahorita y que pues que fueron testigos no nada más de palabras sino arriba del ring y y del todo el trabajo de que ellos no pudieron poder este, adquirir en su carrera y muy contento. It means so much to me to be able to enjoy this with my grandpa and with my dad while we're all still alive. That means a whole hell of love to me. And the fact that I get to carry their mantle and achieve what they unfortunately weren't able to achieve, but to take it even further and put the crew's name on top, that's priceless to me and it means a lot. Hi, Pitbull, right here. Um, my question is, did anything surprise you out there in the ring? And my question for the Can coach, you speak up a little bit? We It's hard yeah. to hear. Did anything surprise you out there when you fought Rolly Romero? And I have another question for the trainer. Did everything go according to your plan and the things that you worked in the gym for the fight with Rolly Romero? Okay, vamos a ir primero con Isaac acá, que era de que te sorprendió algo de Rolly Romero durante la pelea. Eh, sí, mucho. Él decía que venía a golpearme y vino a hacer una, una, un maratón en la pelea y no me espantó el verlo correr por el ring. Uh, what surprised me was that he said that he was going to hit me in the face, that I was going to run into something, and all he did was run. So that surprised me. Uh, and the second question for the trainer, if I'm not mistaken, was the uh, work in the gym? Yeah, if they had any like game plan and was the things that they worked in the gym play out in, in the fight night. Bueno, y la, y la pregunta para usted, señor, era si usted vio que el trabajo en el gimnasio, toda la planificación, la estrategia previa, ¿se reflejó dentro del ring hoy? Sí, bastante claro lo dejó Pitbull, en la forma física, en la forma mental, en el poder de sus, de sus golpes, que Rolly salió espantado y 
habló que iba a pelear y pues salió a correr un, un maratón, del cual yo dije que el ring iba a quedar muy chiquito y honestamente la cadena que se la quede Rolly para que recuerde en toda su vida la golpiza que le metió Pitbull por Bocón. All right, so as far as the preparation, it all was crystal clear inside the ring, physically and mentally, impeccable by, by, by Isaac over here. What he did was flawless and it was everything that we envisioned and more. And I said before that Rolly was going to run a marathon and that the ring was going to be too small. That's exactly what happened. And as far as the chain goes, you know what, he can keep it because that's going to be a lifelong reminder of the beating that my son gave to him tonight. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all the questions. Give it up one more time. Congratulations to the new WBA Super Lightweight World Champion, Isak Pitbull Cruz. Please give it up for the champ, Tim Zhu. Welcome in, Tim. Obviously a very tough defeat, but no less win or lose. We know the pride of Australia. Your people are very proud to have a world champion, and you epitomize what it is to be a throwback fighter. Um, just to open things up, what are your thoughts, you know, after th taking a few minutes to think about it on the results of the fight? Yeah, it was, it was a good war, I'd say. Um, I started off well. Uh, Thundora's a, you know, awkward, awkward uh, top of opponent, very tall, rangy, flicks that jab. Um, I feel like uh, I did isolate his punches where I was able to, you know, sort of feel him out. Um, I think the cut did, of course, um, did play a part a bit. <laughs> um, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> And there was plenty of blood, but no excuses. The better man won tonight, and um, pretty stoked to be to say that I fought in this arena. And yeah, my I want to come back and, and do it again and, and fight the very best out there. You know, uh, had one week notice, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please raise your hand. And once again, I'll try to get you the mic. Uh, questions for Tim. Tim, um, congratulations. Always all heart. Um, I don't know if you guys are able to confirm, but is there a rematch clause, Tim, and do you feel like you yeah, want to run it back with Fandora? Yeah, look, I, I, of, course I, of course I would, you know. He's, he's, he's got my belt now, but I'm going to uh, have a little two-week rest, <laughs> and then I'll get back in the gym, you know. I think um, I want to fight the best, you know. I want to I wanna make the, the mega fights happen. We're able to do this. The Team Mobile Arena, it's pretty unreal, you know, so the biggest fights possibly to make and uh, I'm still chasing the, you know, I still believe I'm the, uh, at the very top of the tree. Hi Tim, Cynthia Conte from uh, Best Ones Boxing Show, period. With that elbow, going into the corner, what was your trainer or your whole team telling you how to go about in your, uh, in your game plan since the blood was gushing everywhere. And also, were you surprised that Fandora actually boxed? Because everyone, literally everyone, thought he was going to be in a phone booth fight with you. Yeah, because um, I, I sort of eliminated his, uh, his shots to, to fight in the phone booth. So I think he only had one option was to, to, to fight me on range. Uh, and what my team was saying was stay focused, you know, like round by round. Um, I remember coming out, and I remember just like putting my head down like that, and it was like a it was like a fountain, just like <laughs> fountain of blood coming out. I was like, <laughs> okay, this can't be good. Tim, right here, Marcus Hayes of Fight Hub TV. Yeah. Uh, first, congratulations on such a wonderful fight. It's sad that there had to be a loser tonight. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you. Tonight I talked to Stitch Duran and he described your cut as the worst type of cut there is in boxing. Um, once you received the cut and you had been bleeding for about seven or eight rounds, did you notice anything physically? Did you feel tired? Did you feel like you were kind of being drained or was it just bleeding? No, it was just, the eyesight was gone. 
you know that I, I, I literally couldn't say I had to wipe my my eyes non-stop like physically I felt still all right um, still it was just yeah you're, you're fighting with blurry vision <laughs> it's not ideal especially with Fondora <laughs> Tim just on that um, was there any thought to like trying to get the fight stopped um, when you couldn't see it well, to, for me to tell the ref... Yeah, or, or your team, was it a consideration nah, at nah, any man. point? Um, to... I, I took some Fondora on a, a week's notice. Um, I am who I am. I'm a warrior, and this is what I do. Like, whatever, a bit of blood. A bit of blood ain't never killed nobody, let's just say that. And the American commentary team seems to suggest that the corner didn't have the right ointment to fix it. Were, were you happy with what was there? No comment. Tim, over here. Harold Guerra, UNLV TV. I know you were very excited to make your Las Vegas debut. It's every boxer and combat athlete streaming a fight out here in the fight capital of the world. So after the fight, Errol Spence went up in the ring. He obviously wants that fight now with Fundora. So did you get to see that, and what is your reaction to that? With who, Fundora and Errol Spence? Yeah, yeah. Errol Spence went in the ring and oh, called yeah. the fight with yeah, well, interesting. <laughs> I'd love to fight Errol Spencer. Well, I went up to him. I go, um, let me know if you want to get it on sometime. <laughs> and with that Las Vegas topic, there was actually a lot of Tim Sue shirts throughout the week here in Las Vegas. How did that make you feel fighting so far away from home, but yet yeah, there being a big fan presence for you? Yeah, like the crowd turned up, you know. Like, um, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Like, I've gone. Still bleeding. Yeah, I've gone. I was mainstream in Australia, and my goal was to, you know, step outside of that and and, and come here to the states and and have that Mexican type style and go to war. You know, that's that's what I like to bring. I bring bring the heat no matter what. Like warrior mentality. That's that's what I'm all about. So um, I want to appeal to this market and and bring these type of like fights. You know, like. These are the fights you want to see. <laughs> uh, one more question. Hey, Tim, how are you? This is Najee from Cigar Talk. Um, obviously, the opponent change happened um, from Keith to Fundora within a few weeks. Um, I can only assume just, you know, your preparation and what you did for Keith, uh, you know, drastically shifted how this fight went. Um, can you speak to that? Just maybe how, you know, as far as game planning was concerned or, you know, even just taking this fight on short notice, how that played into how the fight went tonight? No, I think that that didn't play a part. You know, I was able to adapt. Um, in the first two rounds, I felt felt quite comfortable, and um, he he just came up on top. That's that's all it was. He was the better man tonight. He won by one round, <laughs> split decision. So, look, it is what it is. We we move on, and um, the show goes on. I just want to say that that's one of the bravest performance performances by an Australian athlete that we've seen. For a bloke who could not see for 10 rounds of the fight, but still turned up against a very formidable opponent in Sebastian Fondora. And um, Tim Zhu is an absolute credit to Australia. This is not the end of Tim Zhu at all. It's just the beginning. It just means that we're going to get that rematch happening and we'll, we'll be ready for more fights. Well, Tim, thank you. I'm sure this is certainly not going to be the last we see of you here. So once again, Tim Zhu, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll be back momentarily. Have your questions ready as now the new WBC and WBO Unified World Super Walterweight Champion, the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, is making his way up here to the ring, accompanied by his entire team. So one more time for the Towering Inferno, Sebastian Fundora. Talk about maximizing the opportunity that is put in front of you. You did not think you would be in a position to be in the main event. And Due to circumstances, you decided to take this fight short notice, and you certainly made the most of it. What's the feeling now, being a unified 154-pound champion? I feel this was a 
bound to happen, you know. Uh, uh, it just came a lot faster than we thought. You know, uh, I have a great team. My father, my promoter, Samson, uh, Al Heyman, PBC, all of these guys help guide me to where I want to be. And uh, I'm just extremely grateful and, uh, for the opportunity. And thank you to Tim Sue for giving it, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we'll raise your hands and uh, fire away. Hey, uh, Sebastian, how you doing? Uh, this is Najee from Cigar Talk. First of all, congratulations, man. Great fight. Uh, extremely great win. Um, uh, yeah. Um, obviously, Errol came into the ring after, and, um, you know, he was really adamant about making this his comeback fight, um, you know, specifically in Dallas. I just wanted to know how do you feel about, you know, sort of fighting Errol next and, you know, going to Dallas? Everybody has goals, you know, in boxing. You know, uh, he's a... Uh, He's a legend right now in this sport, you know, and one of the top fighters. So, you know, uh, I like to get in the ring with him, too. You know, it would be a great fight. You know, he's uh, uh, before that Terrence Crawford fight, he was considered one of the best fighters in the world. So let's do it. S Sebastian, Melissa Woods from AAP. Um, can you tell us, well, Tim was just saying he obviously wants a rematch with you. Might be one for Samson. Like, do you have a rematch clause? Like, are you prepared to fight him given that he gave you this opportunity? I don't know. That's not my part of the business. Uh, I just go in the ring and I fight, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm going to give it to my promoter. Here's Samson wants to answer. What it was the question? If there was a rematch clause. Yeah, it's verbally a, a rematch clause, uh, but um, uh, I believe that I'm a promoter. I need to maximize the income of the fighter. And uh, most likely, uh, he will have uh, to wait on one fight at least, recoup himself, zoo, and then maybe we can do it. But definitely, it will be in America because it's uh, to be the fight of the year, and maybe we do two times. But the first of all, we need to take care of the business. Sebastian, right here, Marcus Hayes with Fight Hub. Uh, earlier in the week, we talked, uh, you, me, Nonito Donaire, um, and I asked you, I said, why give up your for sure shot for the WBC interim title? And you looked at me and you said, Marcus, it's because I'm ready. I'm ready to push all my chips in and I believe in myself more than I ever have. Talk to us about getting through such a bloody fight tonight and coming out on the winning side. This is nothing new to me. Uh, if you've seen my fights before, I know you have. Uh, uh, my fights are always bloody. You know, I think this is another maybe fight of the year candidate. You know, this is a, a, was a tough fight. We knew we had a tough opponent for us, in front of us with Tim Sue. We knew we had a tough opponent with Bolashuk. So we had a hard camp. We had a hard camp, and uh, I was ready for whoever they throw at me. Uh, it could have been a, a, a Mike Tyson. I'm not going to say that, but it's, it could have been anybody. It could have been anybody, and, and we were ready for it. Sebastián Samson, Ernesto Amador de No Puedes Jugar Boxeo. No cabe duda que esta noche se tiene que celebrar seguramente eh, también este campeonato para México, por tu sangre mexicana. La pregunta es para Fundora y para Samson Lukowicz. Felicidades, por cierto. No, yes, I think with this fight we really showed our Mexican blood, um, inside and out. But, uh, uh, you know, we're incredibly grateful for, for all the fans that came out. We, you know, we stepped into Vegas, and all the Mexican crowd came and supported us. We were very, very, very uh, uh, lucky to have it. And, uh, I'm, you know, on two weeks' notice, it's short notice, but they came and they supported me. They supported us like they supported Pitbull. And uh, I'm just happy that uh, all the Mexicans won today, and, and uh, let's continue to do it. Well... <clears throat> One more time, I make history. En español. Bueno, hicimos nuevamente historia. Tengo a Gabriela Fundora, igual a, a Sebastián Fundora, el cual es la primera vez en la historia de que hermana y hermano sean campeones mundiales al mismo tiempo. Nunca existió, es histórico. What I'm saying is, uh, we make history one more time because Gabriela Fundora, is, she is a champion, and now Sebastian Fundora is a champion. Never ever happened in boxing to be a female and male champion at the same time. So 
I'm very happy to be part of that. Sebastian, congratulations, young man, on a great win. Um, my question to you is, the WB order, the WBO orders you to, fi to fight uh, Crawford next or you'll be stripped. Under any circumstances, will you vacate the WBO belt to fight Errol Spence? Whatever they give me, whatever they give me. Uh, Earl Spence is a great opportunity. I think it's a, 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 a match made in heaven. But Terrence Crawford is the best fighter in the world. I would like to fight him. Thank you. Gail Falkenthal, NY Fights. Congratulations. It seems it's always a family effort with the Fundoras. Sebastian, I'm sure you've heard a lot of critics and doubters say, eh, Fundora can't stay disciplined enough through this fight. He'll eventually, after a few rounds, go back to brawling. But this time, despite the distraction of all the blood, you did stay disciplined. Can you tell us a little about that and whether you heard those comments prior to the fight? Uh, you know, I, those comments, they never reach my ear. I'm sure they're always there. Uh, everybody has opinions. That's the, that's the thing about life. Everybody's going to speak their own um, views and thoughts. But you know what? Uh, I had a whole year. I had a whole year of camp since I lost with Mendoza. And uh, uh, we've been working. We've been working on our defense. We've been working on sitting back. We've been working about using our jab. So it's, uh, 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 it all came out in the fight. And I hope you guys saw it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Two more questions. Cynthia Conte, Best Women's Boxing Show, period. First off, happy belated, Gabriella. And congratulations, Sebastian. It's funny, I sat with your sister the other day on my live stream, and we talked about how you fight. And I asked, why does your brother fight on the inside when you don't, when you don't use necessarily your reach and your height and your length? And she said, that's because it's in his blood. It's that Mexican style. What more do you want? We saw something very, very different, and I told Zoo the same exact thing. Did you expect him to be fighting that exact way? And you fought the way that probably no one thought. Can you talk about that? Coming off of uh, Gail's question. Again, uh, we've been working very hard for a whole year, um, trying to fix my mistakes. This is the first of many, you know. You guys know I can find the inside, and now you know that I can find the outside. So, uh, you know, I'm going to continue just doing my thing and whatever I feel like, whatever I feel comfortable that night, that's what you guys will see. Okay, last question here. Sebastian, congratulations over here to your left. Good job. Um, I wanted to ask you seriously, like when that was going on in the ring and it was so bloody, what were you thinking and ultimately what did you learn about yourself tonight? I thought to myself, hey, it's kind of sticky in here. No. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that I, I've been through stuff like that. Uh, since I was eight years old, I used to bleed from my nose all the time. So, you know, blood's nothing crazy for me until they draw it from my arm. But other than that, you know, I'm, uh, there's nothing new. We, we fight on these stage. We're modern-day gladiators, you know. And I'm, um, I hope Amazon Prime Video got a good first show, you know. Uh, and I'm glad that I made history today. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you to your entire team. What a way to kick things off. PBC on Prime Video. The towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, world unified champion in the super welterweight division. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming on out to T-Mobile Arena. The inaugural show, PBC on Prime, will be back May 4th, Cinco de Mayo weekend for a big one, Canelo versus Munguia. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great night.